All right, we are here now that we have a working computer to go through all the new cards from Midnight Hunt. We're going to rank them using Tier Maker here. We'll start with Eternal Gold, where it's, I think could be playing Eternal formats. I'll include Historic, um, Modern, Pioneer, because I believe that's going to come back. Then we have EDH Gold, as in it, it's going to replace a card that already exists, or it definitely will go in EDH Rec. An EDH maybe, it be, I might try and experiment with it, see if it goes. Fun Brews is, it might have a place in a janky, chaotic brew, but nothing too good. And then Not For Niv is basically the card won't exist for Niv. So our first card here is Angel Fire Ignition. As you see over here, we we'll put in the cards here. Put two 1-1 one -one counters on target creature against Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, Tay, End of Turn, Flashback, to Red and White. I'm going to start this off with a not, f well, a maybe an EDH, maybe in a 1-1 one -one counters deck, just for fun. One of the big problems I have with it is, one, it's a sorcery, so it's not like Boris Charm with the indestructible protection. Flashback is cool, so I'd probably experiment with it in um, plus one plus one counters deck. We're going to go quick through these, because there's like 40 cards. Arcane Infusion, look at the top four cards of your library, you may be on the instant sorcery card from among them, put that into your hand, the Mystic Bottom Sword, or in a different library. Blah. Flashback. Instant Speed, pretty solid. I... The fact that it puts them to the bottom as well, I genuinely think I might be putting this on an Eternal Gold here. I might try this in Modern, because I believe digging for like a bring to light or a removal and being able to put the niv and the other creatures you might not want to pick up on the bottom. Right, we move on now to our next card, which is the Arlen. Arlen packs hope and Arlen immunes fury. The Nightbound Flipped is a werewolf mechanic, so Arlen comes in with four loyalty and can plus to cast the speech of curls as though they have flash and additional 1-1 counters on it and create two green werewolves and the other side is a plus two that creates gruel mana uh, or zero that turns Arlen into a 5-5 five -five werewolf. Uh, straight up here I believe these cards belong in EDH gold. I'm tempted to also put them here because it's a flip card so they'll go together. Arlen clearly goes in 1-1 one -one counter decks in potentially token decks um, I could also see it maybe in a historic Niv, potentially, but I do think it has more value in EDH, so we're going to stick with EDH. Moving on, we have the Blade Scoot Scarab. Other oh, zombies get 1 1 1. Right, straight up, not for Niv. This is a tribal card. A really good one, but not great. Can't stay away. Return to a creature with mana free or left in your graveyard. In battlefield, it gains. If this creature would die, exile it instead. I believe this is going to be an EDH gold. I believe bringing back a free cost creature with an ETB will be solid with the flashbacks great. And in the blink decks you can blink it to reset the creature so it won't have the die effect. It's going to be a very good thing. Corpse Cobble. Additional uh, cost of spell, sacrifice number of creatures. Create a blue black X zombie where X is the total number of power creatures sacrificed. I'm going to say it's... EDH gold again for the uh, for the uh, sacrifice deck, the aristocrats. I believe that it an instant speed two mana spell that could sack my entire board is pretty decent in that deck. Crocolin counterpart. I'm gonna be a bit controversial here. So it's Simicum one. Create a token that's a copy of target non frog creature, except it's a one one green frog, and it has flashback. I'm actually going to put this in Eternal Gold. I'm going to put it at the bottom of Eternal Gold though. It's definitely EDH Gold, but I do think that, I think like, copying a busted card, but even it being a 1-1 one -one might be interesting. For example, copying a Flash um, Spell um, Snap Caster Mage, or copying an indestructible creature even though it's a 1-1 one -one, it might I think there is um, some merit to that and I will be experimenting 
Star uh, Half Wardens, Human Warlock, Vigilance. The unit of combat on your turn, if you control three more creatures with different powers, creatures you control get plus one percent on your turn this turn. Um, maybe EDH for the attacking or the power deck. Okay, then we move on to our next creature, which is Denik, Pious Appar Apprentice. Cards in graveyards can't be targeted spells or abilities. And disturb if he gets killed to bring him back. One or more creature cards are put into graveyards from anywhere. Investigate. Trigger this ability once every turn. So, this one's quite unique. It is a standard hate bear. And I do believe I'm going to put this in EDH gold. Because it will go in my hate bears deck. I don't think it's good enough to be in eternal formats. It's kind of like Lavinia. She didn't really do enough to warrant her. Uh, Anything too good. Alright, moving on. When it enters the battlefield, mill two cards. Devoted Graft Keeper, sorry. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, tap target creature your opponent you don't control. Disturb. Um, I didn't get the other side of this because this one is potentially just a fun brood. There's nothing too crazy in there. Diagraph Rebirth. This spell costs one less for each creature this side of the turn. Return a target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield for flashback with the same effect. Yes, this is going to be EDH Gold. This will see play in several Niv decks. I could see, you know, board wipe, reanimate your biggest threat. I think it'll be very solid. Dire Strain Rampage. Destroy target artifact and channel or land. If a land is destroyed this way, its controller searches library for two basic land cards, puts them into the battlefield tapped. Otherwise, its controller may search their library for a basic land card and put it into the battlefield tapped and flashback. I. Again, I'm going to put this... Uh, it's free mana hate for a Tron land. And a lot of modern decks don't run too many basic lands. It also specifies that we can destroy a land. So, I mean, we'd never do it because we're five colors, but I think this is going to be pretty solid in uh, most decks. Where you want to hate out a land piece. And even in Commander, going back to this, I just thought about it. I will happily, in many cases, trade a Field of the Dead for two basic lands um, with an opponent. Faithful Mending, fantastic card. Gain to life, draw two cards, then discard two cards. Flashback, one Azorius. It is Faithless Looting, but in blue white. Um, I think this is a fun brew. I don't think it'll be a solid sane EDH. It'll be something I might bring around in a unique EDH deck going forward. But let's take a whenever you sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and scry one. Pay one, sacrifice your first to get end of turn. This is gonna go in maybe EDH. Now I know with the ability it might sound like a great ability for the aristocrat deck in EDH, but that uh, Azorius in that deck is not Azorius. Orzov in that deck is really stacked with good cards, so it's very hard to say. Alright, next on we have Florian. Well, not even going to try it. Legendary Vampire for Rakdos. At the beginning of your post combat main phase, look at the top X card of your library. Where X is the number of life your opponent's lost this turn, exile one of those cards and put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exile cards this turn. Um. I would say this is a maybe D. Maybe EDH? It would definitely be for the attacking deck. I'll put maybe, as in I'll experiment with this, but I'm not sure if it'll fit in permanently. Moving on, we have Galvanic Iteration. Whenever you catch your next instant or sorcery card this turn, copy that spell, you may choose new targets. Free mana flashback. So, yeah, this is. <sighs> Hmm. This is definitely going. This is probably one of the cards I'm most excited about playing in EDH. So EDH Gold. Come on, you can go this side of Arlen. There you go. I would say it's on the edge of Eternal Gold. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to change this to Fun Brews. As in, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, so late game commander, draw this, cast it, flash it back, get two copies of it because you with the flashback. And then you have three copies of the next spell you cast. It's pretty solid. Google Call is Harvest. 
create X black black zombie tokens where with decay. Where X is half the number of creature cards in your graveyard rounded up. Alright. EDH gold. This set is stacked in other terms. Obviously aristocrat sacrifice. Grizzly gold, trample, enters the battlefield, one one counter for each creature that's died this turn. Uh, not for Nip, I don't think that's good enough to see play anywhere. Hollowed Respite, Exile, non legendary creature returns to the battlefield under its own control. Free mana flashback, sorcery. This is definitely a maybe EDH. I might say this is a fun brew. I actually attempted to put this in not for Nip. No, main reasons. One, sorcery speed. Two, non legendary creature. I mean, blinking is great, but sorcery speed blink is not the greatest. So I'll probably put it in a not for nib there. Alright, moving along, we have Hungry for More. Create a 1 free Black Bird Vampire token, trample, lifelink, and haste. Sacrifice to begin the next end step, and flashback. Um, I'd say maybe the H again, token deck, but I'm not sure the merit of. I mean, there are some atrocious cards I'm running in Rakdos for it, so it will probably see play. Join the dance. Create 1-1 one, one human tokens and flashback again. Maybe EDH. It's not that powerful, but I might just experiment with it in the tokens deck for fun. Kalania. Oh, Dawnheart Prime. Protection from werewolves. Human creatures you control have Bird of Paradise ability. And then Salai's ability to put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. <laughs> It's going to be controversial here, but I'm going to say not for Niv. It's cool having that ability of paying six, putting a Mormon counter on each creature you control. There are better things to do that for Niv selection, and the restriction of humans only getting that tap ability means she's. I mean, she is a mana dock herself, but she's also a 1 1. Don't think she's great. Kessig Naturalist. Okay, I didn't put the other half of this one because basically the other half of this is a Werewolf Lord. So like the Zombie Lord, not for Niv. Moving on. Alicia, Forgotten Archangel, Flying Lifelink. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, returns to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it in its stead. Yeah, so EDH gold for Alicia. I think she'll be in my Hey Bears deck, definitely. Um... I'm gonna definitely try her out in there. All right, moving on to Ludwig Necrogenius. Whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, mill a card. And then his ability is two blue, two black, and X. Exile X creature cards from your graveyard at Ludwig. No, it can't be zero. Activate as a sorcery, and he transforms into Olak Ludwig's Hubris. When it transforms, it becomes a copy of target creature exile who accept his name is Olag 4-4 four, four legendary blue black zombie in addition to other colours and put a number of 1-1 one, one counters on it equal to the number of creatures cards exiled this way so this is not for Niv this is going to be a cool commander ability but it's going to be like the Lazav um, commander deck where they're just going to mill till they hit something like a phage or something busted and then sneak a Ludwig hit in there to get around that ability pretty cool but not for a Niv deck I'm gonna say that old sticky fingers green black and X whenever you cast a spell reveal cards to top of your library until you reveal X creature cards put all creature cards reveal this way into your graveyard then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order its power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard I think this is a brew around like a fun brew it's great for graveyard decks but it depends on how much reanimation you get and other things. So I think it's going to be a fun brew round. I don't think it's a baby yet, but yes, moving along. Clem Co Rem Cavellius Stalwart Slayer. Flying haste. If a spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control for event that damage. If a spell would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent, an opponent controls it deals that much damage plus one instead. Alright, I'm going to put this in the mm, EDH Gold, because I'm going to run him in the Hate Bears deck. It's not great, but it's fun, and I do love the fact that he's riding the Seismic Swan. I don't know if it is a Seismic Swan, but in my mind, 
in my mind it looks like he's riding a seismic swan which is perfect for me there Ride of Harmony. Whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under your control this turn, draw a card. Four mana flashback. This is maybe EDH, I think? Or do I say EDH called? I'm going to say maybe EDH, because I think in a sacrifice deck or a deck where you're going to mass reanimate, because it doesn't specify cast, it just meant to... Yeah, I'm going to say Rite of Harmony is going to be uh, maybe EDH. It's one I will try at some point, I guarantee you. Rite of Oblivion has additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a non-land permanent. Exile target non-land permanent, four mana flashback. Hmm. Maybe EDH? I don't think it's game breaking, but it's going to be fun moving along. Rural Coil Creeper. Add man mana of any color. Add two mana of one color, but only use it to cast spells from your graveyard. Exile. Return target in card from a flashback you own from exile to your hand. Ooh. I think this is a fun brew round. I don't think it's going to be game breaking, but I do think it could be fun to go around definitely fun to buy back something busted with flashback i have to look at what we could do sacred fire this is a draft pick so it's not for niv cicada champion of light flying travel humans get one 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 uh coven whenever she attacks you control three or more creatures with different powers look at the top five cards your library you may reveal a human card and put the rest of your hand put the bottom in them there's some bottom in a random order it pains me to do this because i do love angels but it's not for niv Moving along, Siphon Insight. Look at the top two cards of Target Opponent's Library. Exile one of them face down and put the other one at the bottom of that library. You may look and play the Exiled card for as long as it remains exiled. And you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Ooh. I am going to be a little controversial here. I'm going to say... That this might be fun in eternal formats. It's low eternal again. I'm gonna I'm gonna brew with it, but stealing something from an opponent I think is gonna be solid. And the fact that it's instant, particularly if like an opponent, a control opponent attempts to like brainstorm with Jace. I don't know. Mm, I'm kinda of talking myself out of it. I'm gonna put this in fun brews, because I always think that stealing stuff brews are pretty fun. Solvark, the Overslime, a free for use. Whenever a land's put into a graveyard from anywhere, put a 1 1 counter on him. Remove three counters from him to return into his over's hand. Whenever he leaves the battlefield, return three target lands from your graveyard to your hand. Hmm, this card is hard to judge. It doesn't specify when he returns to your bat, it just returns. So if he dies, he's flickered. This card to me is maybe EDH. I think flickering it getting it back would be pretty decent. Not too solid, but good. Storm Skitterix, whatever it is. Drake Horror. It's a sorcery cost one less. When you cast it gets to the end of turn, five mana flying. No, I'm afraid we won't see this one being played. Sunrise Cavalier, Trample Haste. If it's neither night or day, it becomes day as it enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night, it becomes day for a 1 1 counter on target creature you control. That's not for Nib, that's more for a. Although. I'll put Fun Bruce, because I think. Could be. No, I think not for Nib. The cycle of nine days is going to be way too hard to flip in Commander or other formats. Teferi, who slows the sunset. Right, four mana is always Planeswalker, plus one, choose one target artifact, up to one target creature, up to one target land. Untap those chosen permanents you control. Tap them if you don't control it, you gain two life. Alright. This is... It'll be tough to say because I think he'll be D 
definitely EH Gold. I'm not sure if he has a place in Eternal formats. I mean, it's minus two. Put one of them into your hand for the rest of the bottom in any order. He feels very fair and balanced. And honestly, in Eternal formats, as long as, I mean, in modern, as long as free mana to fairy is viable, then is legal, sorry, not viable. It's going to see play here, but in Commander, there's going to be some busted stuff you can do with him. I mean, my friend, I think, has already worked out a way in um, in Esper to basically go infinite with the chain. I mean, chain veil, any big soul land, and any kind of mana dork, and you can go infinite with Teferi here. I mean, just getting that emblem, I mean... <sighs> Never choose a planeswalker by the emblem because that's going to be the hardest thing to judge. But yes, I do believe he is going to be EDH called. I will probably play him in a fair few decks just to see how he goes on. Ah, oh, Dire Overlord. Whenever a werewolf deals damage to a card, if you have three or more, you may transform him into a nightbound. Not for Niv, this is the werewolf commander that everyone has been clamoring for, so. We will not be playing it in Niv decks, but it is a cool card and we'll see it a lot, I guarantee. A natural moonrise becomes night and creatures you can talk and trample whenever they deal damage or a card flashback. This is for werewolf tribal support. Very good card, but not for Niv. Vadric Astral Mage. It's neither night or day, it becomes day when he enters the battlefield. Instant sorcery spells you control cost less X with less his power. Whenever day becomes night, night becomes day, put a warm one counter on him. I think he'll be a fun brew around. I think he could fit in a kind of storm cost reduction deck. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm off thinking it, but you know what? I still think he's pretty solid. We're near the end now. Vampire Socialite. Whenever it enters the battlefield or an opponent lost life, put warm one counters on each vampire you control. Put additional 1 1 count. As long as the opponent last night is turn vampires, you control and an additional 1 1 counter on it. So, support for vampire tribal, very good, but not for Niv. Wake the slaughter. Wake to slaughter, sorry. Choose two target creature cards in your graveyard. An opponent chooses one of them. Return the card to your hand. Return the other to the battlefield under your control. It gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Flashback 4. So this is a powerhouse in many things. This will be EDH Gold. I will, uh, or maybe EDH, EDH Gold. I think um, there are plenty of scenarios where you know putting an extra creature into play, or you can. There's a reason the ultimatum that gets free creatures is busted because you can put people in bad situations. So definitely going to be solid in Commander. With a form blessing, a final card. Put a 1-1 counter onto one target creature you control. Tap up to one creature you don't control, and that creature does not untap during its controller's next untap step. Hmm. I would say this is a maybe EDH card to end us off here because I could see it sitting in a kind of middle space, but not too crazy. So that's the end of our list, as you can see. Uh, Eternal Gold, I'm thinking we may have a few little cards. These are mostly experiments though, so we'll see how they go. There's plenty of solid stuff for our Commander decks. Plenty of stuff to um, maybe consider. Fun brew stuff as well to look into. Uh, a few selections that were not for us, but you know, not every card should be made with Niv in mind. But yes, this is a very rich set, and I'm very much looking forward to the pre-release. Let me know if you'd rank any of these higher or lower. See ya.